Articles, although simple on the surface, are the essential devices behind natural and elegant language, be it written or spoken. Today we discuss a host of rules that govern the correct use of articles in the English language, providing you tools crucial to more natural sounding and error-free language. So let's begin with the first rule, that is the rule of sound. All right, so let's begin with the simple yet crucial rule of sound. Now, it's common knowledge that in language there are essentially two types of sound. You've got the vowel sound and the consonant sound. Your vowel sounds are all those that are born of the five vowels A, E, I, O, U. Whereas you've got the consonant sounds, which are all the sounds stemming from the remaining 21 letters of the alphabet. Now, that being said, let's discuss the usage of the articles A uh, and AN. Now, all of us are aware of the simple rule, which is that whenever a spelling begins with a vowel, it receives the article AN. Whereas if a spelling begins with a consonant, then the article of choice is A. Uh. Let's have a look at some examples. So. On the vowel side, you have examples such as an apple, an ink pot, and an elephant. Whereas on the consonant side, you have the examples such as a doctor, a boy, and so on. Now, this rule over here does give rise to a contradiction, which is that if this is the case, then why do we come across expressions such as an hour, a university, a European city, and so on? Whereas H, actually being a consonant, should be receiving the article a, uh, and likewise over here, U and E, being vowels, should be receiving the article an. And the answer for this actually lies in the extension and rectification of that previous rule, which is that it is not so much the spelling, but the sound which influences the decision or the choice between the articles a uh, and an. Now, this is to say that if a word begins with a vowel, but the vowel ends up sounding like a consonant, then it's going to receive the article a. Uh. And likewise, if a spelling begins with a consonant, but the consonant this time ends up sounding like a vowel, then it's going to receive the article an. Let's see that in action with the help of some examples. So once again, that expression an hour, h over here should be receiving a, but the reason for that being that h in case of hour producing a vowel sound of a or a to be exact as our, hence receiving the article an in place of a, giving you the correct usage as an hour. Likewise, if we come to this side, all the words beginning with the sound similar to the words you and your receive the article a. Uh, and the reason for that is that the words that begin with the sound of you and your are not stemming from the vowel sound u, but from the consonant sound y which is the reason why you have a university and a European city over here because university is stemming from the U sound and European is stemming from the your sound, justifying the use of a in place of the article an. And this is the entire rule of sound vis-a-vis a -vis and an and the rule comes down to the fact that a for all the consonant sounds and an for all the vowel sounds. Now this takes me to the next article which is the. Now the as an article has two alternative pronunciations, the first one being the as in the -E, and the other one being the. And the simple rule of usage over here is that whenever a spelling begins with a vowel sound, then the takes the form of the, which is why towards the end of the movie, you instinctively utter the words the end and you do not go for the end. The reason for that is quite simple, that end, if the E begins with the vowel sound E, hence the takes the form of the. You've got the phonetic symbol over here, giving rise to the correct pronunciation of the, which is the end. Likewise, you have one more example over here. You've got the air. Now, H, although a consonant over here, produces the vowel sound of A, and hence the correct usage as the air and not the air. Likewise, coming on this side, the rule goes that uh, whenever a spelling begins with a consonant sound, then the takes the pronunciation of the, giving you expressions such as the house and the one. Now, over here, once again, you have O, which is a vowel, but please do note that in case of the one, uh, O is producing a consonant sound of V as in one. So being a consonant sound, the takes the form of the, giving you the correct usage as the one and not the one. And this was the vis-a-vis the rule of sound, which is the in case of vowel sounds and the in case of consonant sounds. And that wraps up a, an, and the vis-a-vis -vis the rule of sound. Let's proceed to rule number two.
All right, now we begin with rule number two, which is you know which ones. And this is simply to state that when the speaker and the listener are both already aware about the person or the thing being talked about, then we use the article the. As opposed to this, when neither the speaker nor the listener are clear about the person or the object being talked about, then the article of choice is a. Let's have a look at some examples over here. So we've got a sentence as, I'm going to the hotel. In this case, the speaker and the listener are both clear about which hotel, hence you've got, I'm going to the hotel. As opposed to this, you've got a sentence, I'm going to a hotel. Over here, the speaker is undecided about the choice of hotel yet. The listener and the speaker are not clear about which hotel. Hence, you've got the usage, I'm going to a hotel. Let's take one more example. You've got the sentence as let's buy the car. Now in this case, the listener and the speaker are both thinking about the same car. They've already made their choice. Hence, you've got let's buy the car. As opposed to this, you've got let's buy a car where both the parties to the conversation are yet to choose the car. They do not have any same car in the mind. Hence, you've got the sentence as let's buy a car. So those were some basic examples and now let's move on to some situations wherein the speaker and the listener might already be aware of the person or the thing being talked about. Let's have a look at the first situation which is when we have mentioned the thing or the person before already. Let's have a look at some examples here. So you've got a sentence as she's got two children, a boy and a girl. The boy's 14 and the girl's 16. So over here you notice first time when we introduce the boy and the girl in the context we use the article a. Uh. But when we refer to the same boy and girl the second time then the article of choice was the. Hence giving you the sentence as the boy's 14 and the girl's 16. Let's take a similar example over here. So the speaker says, I've bought a new jacket. This is the first time we're introducing the jacket in the context, hence you've got a new jacket. To this, the listener responds saying, oh, how much was the jacket for? Now this is the reason that the jacket was already mentioned in the context, hence the second time you have how much was the jacket for. Let's go to the next situation over here, which is when we say which ones we mean. This is to say when the speaker specifies uh, the thing or the person they mean, which brings the listener and the speaker on the same page. Let's have a look at the examples here as well. So we've got the sentence as, who's the boy standing over there? Now, the speaker is making it very clear which boy they are talking about. Hence, you've got the article, who's the boy standing over there? As opposed to this, if I just wish to convey general information, I do not wish to mean anything specific, I'll have that sentence as, there's a boy standing over there. Taking one more example over here, we've got the sentence as, I'm going to try on the jeans you gave me. Now over here, the speaker is very specific about the pair of jeans they're talking about, which was the one given to them by the listener. Hence, you've got the sentence as, I'm going to try on the jeans you gave me. As opposed to this, if neither the speaker or the listener are certain about the pair of jeans they're going to try on, you'll have that sentence as, I'm going to try on a pair of jeans, which could be any, any pair of jeans really, nothing has been chosen yet. Hence, you've got a pair of jeans. We come to the final situation, which is when it is clear from the situation which ones we mean. Let's have a look at this examples over here as well. We got the sentence as, could you please close the door? Now, evidently, the room only has one door, which is open. Hence, it's implied which door the speaker is talking about. There's no confusion between the listener and the speaker. And you've got the sentence as, could you please close the door? As opposed to this, we have a sentence with the article a, uh, which is, could you please close a door? This means that the place perhaps has multiple doors which are open and neither the speaker or the listener are clear about which door is being talked about. Hence, you've got, could you please close a door? We come to the final example, which is Kate is in the bathroom. Now this place, evidently the house or any place wherever Kate is, only has one bathroom. Uh, so uh, evidently she's in there and you've got the sentence as Kate is in the bathroom. It's obvious which bathroom we're talking about. On the other hand, you've got the sentence with the article a uh, again. You have Kate is in a bathroom. Now perhaps Kate is in a larger place which has multiple bathrooms and the speaker and the listener are not clear about which bathroom they're talking about. And hence you've got that sentence as Kate is in 
a bathroom. So that brings us to the end of rule two, which is that whenever we're talking about the thing which is clear to both the listener and the speaker, we're going to go ahead and use the article the. Whereas when neither the speaker nor the listener are clear about the person or the object being talked about, we're going to go ahead and use the article a. That brings us to the end of rule two. Let's proceed to rule number three. All right, so we begin with rule number three, which is talking about groups of people. And the rule over here is quite simple, which is that whenever you wish to talk about people as a group, you simply express that using the article the followed by the adjective. Let's have a look at some examples over here. So you have 11 groups lined up over here. Let's read them out quickly. You've got the young, the old, the elderly, the rich, the poor, the homeless, uh, the sick, the disabled, the unemployed, the injured, and the dead. Now an important thing to take note of over here, which is that since all of these indicate groups, they are always treated as plurals. By which I wish to say that when I use the expression the young, I do not wish to imply any particular young person. On the other hand, what I do wish to imply is the sum total of all the young people in the society. Similarly, if I say the old, I wish to imply all the old people. Likewise, you've got the elderly, which is to say all the elderly people in the society. And likewise, you've got the rich, the poor, implying all the rich and the poor folks in the society respectively. And it goes on in a similar fashion. I'm sure you get the idea. And now let's get to those examples. We begin with the first one, which is the young. So you have the sentence as the young are the future of a nation. That's to say that all the young people are the future of any particular nation. So we're not implying any specific nation over here because this is a universal fact. Hence, you've got the article a nation. Moving on to the second example, we have the old this time. And you have that sentence as people need to be patient with the old. Coming to the third one, you have the group as the elderly and the sentence goes, the elderly are rich in life's experience. Moving on to the fourth one, you have the group as the rich, that's, uh, that's to imply all the rich people and the sentence goes, this time it's a question, you have, do you think the rich need to pay higher taxes? Once again implying all the rich, rich section of the society. And we move on to the next one, that is the poor, the poor need the society's compassion, which is to say the kindness. We come to the next one, you have the homeless and the sentence is, the organization works for providing shelter to the homeless. Now you must have noticed we have the before organization over here which is to specify a particular organization hence the usage of the article the. Coming to the next one we have the sick and the sentence is the sick require proper medical attention. Moving on to the next one which is the disabled and you have your sentence as one mustn't make fun of the disabled that's to say all the people who are physically challenged. We come to the next one which is the unemployed and the sentence goes life is very difficult for the unemployed. A, pr a proven truth. And then you have the second last one which is uh, the injured and the sentence goes the injured were taken to the hospital. Now you must have noticed we have the hospital over here that's to specify the nearest hospital to the incident. We come to the last one now which is the dead and the sentence goes graveyards are meant for the dead that once again implied all the people who have passed away. And that covers the third rule, which is talking about groups of people. I hope you've understood that with the help of these 11 examples. And the rule goes that whenever you wish to talk about people as a group, you have that expressed as the article the followed by the adjective. That's rule number three. Let's move ahead to rule number four. All right, now on to a simple rule, which is talking about professions and the rule over here is quite simple which is that whenever we wish to express what somebody does we do that with the help of the articles a uh, or an depending upon the sound let's have a look at some examples over here so we've got the first sentence as roger is a doctor so over here i wish to express what roger does and hence i have that as roger is a doctor as opposed to this let's compare this sentence over here we have that as roger is the doctor who treated me now i'm sure you're wondering that we've gone against the rule but what you must realize over here is that I in this sentence I do not wish to express what Roger does rather I have Roger in my mind as a specific professional who rendered a specific service hence the use of the article the doctor let's have a look at another sentence over here we have that as Jack is an electrician once again I wish to inform what Jack does and I do that as Jack is 
an electrician and because of the vowel sound e so you've got an over there i wish to tell what jack does as opposed to this i have another sentence over here as i need to pay the electrician once again in this sentence i do not wish to inform who does what rather i have a specific electrician in my mind who rendered a specific service and needs to be remunerated for the same so you have that simple rule number four as talking about professions and the rule once again is that whenever you wish to say what somebody does you do that with the help of the articles uh, or and once again depending upon the sound and now let's move on to rule number five All right, so we begin with rule number five, which is the rule of uncountable nouns. And the rule simply states that you do not use any articles with your uncountable nouns as long as they do not turn specific or turn into countable or measurable units. Let's have a look at some examples over here. We've got the first sentence as water flows downhill. Now you've got water as your uncountable noun over here. And you have a universal fact which doesn't apply to any specific water, but to all water across the globe. Hence, you have that sentence without any article as water flows downhill as opposed to this you have a sentence as the water in this bottle is dirty now I realize that we are going against the rule but the reason for this is that this time I'm not talking about water in general I'm talking about some specific water that's contained in the bottle that we're talking about giving us the usage of the article the and the sentence as the water in this bottle is dirty Moving on to a similar example, we've got another universal truth, which is salt is white in color, talking about all the table salt across the world, which is white in color. You've got salt as your uncountable quantity, not talking about any specific salt here, hence no usage of the article. And you have that sentence as salt is white in color. As opposed to this, if I'm talking about some particular salt, say a salt shaker, which is lying in front of me on a table, then I go ahead and say a sentence with the help of the article the as could you pass the salt? Because this time it's the salt that's lying in front of me in a salt shaker, necessitating the usage of the article the. And now we come on to last two examples which exhibit the fact that your uh, uncountable nouns do require the article a uh, whenever they acquire a countable or measurable shape. Let's have a look at these examples now. So we have the sentence as, do we have any bread? Bread being your uncountable noun over here. I'm talking in general about bread. So we've got no article here as, do we have any bread? However, when bread turns into countable units, say slices, you can count slices, you will have a sentence as, can I have a slice of bread? Because slices are countable, although bread is not. Now we come to the last example on similar lines. We've got tea is served hot, once again a universal fact, hence without the usage of any article as tea is served hot. As opposed to this, you can however count cups of tea and hence you've got a uh over there giving you the sentence as I'd like a cup of tea. And that was rule number five of uncountable nouns, which is to state once again that all your uncountable nouns do not require the usage of any article as long as they do not turn specific or turn into measurable or countable units. So that's rule number five. Let's proceed to rule number six. All right, so we begin with rule number six, which is purpose versus place. And the rule over here is quite simple, that for places such as school, prison, hospital, university, college, church, and so on, whenever we are going to the place with its purpose in mind, then we're going to omit or leave out the article. Whereas if we are thinking of the specific place itself and not its purpose, then we're going to introduce the article the. Let's have a look at some examples. We've got the first sentence as Jill goes to school every day. So Jill's a student and she goes there every day to study. And hence you've got no article in the sentence giving you the sentence as Jill goes to school every day. As opposed to this, you've got today Jill's mother is going to the school to meet her teacher. Now, Jill's mother is just a visitor who is going to a specific school that is Jill's school and she's going there in the capacity of a visitor and we do not have the purpose in sight which is to study and hence you've got the sentence as today Jill's mother is going to the school to meet her teacher. Let's go to the next example which is 
Ed's brother is in prison for robbery. So Ed's brother has committed a crime. Hence, he is serving the sentence in the prison, which is the purpose of the prison. Hence, you do not see any article there. You've got Ed's brother is in prison for robbery. As opposed to this, you've got Ed's going to the prison to see his brother. Ed, in this case, is not serving as a prisoner. Rather, he's just a visitor to see his brother going to that specific prison wherein Ed is serve, Ed's brother is serving his sentence. Hence, you've got the sentence as Ed's going to the prison to see his brother. Coming to the next one, we have after her accident, Jane was taken to hospital. Now, obviously, if she's met with an accident, she has gone to the hospital in the capacity of a patient. So the purpose of the hospital, which is to treat patients, hence you've got no article there giving you after her accident, Jane was taken to hospital. As opposed to this, we've got Anne has gone to the hospital to visit Jane over here. Anne is just a visitor. She hasn't come with the purpose of a treatment. So she's just a visitor to the specific hospital wherein Jane has been admitted. And you have that sentence as Anne has gone to the hospital to visit Jane. Coming to the next one, we have he goes to university for studying. So that's pretty straightforward. You have the purpose of the university being highlighted, hence no article. On the other hand, you have, I went to the university to meet Professor Brooks. Now I'm going to the university, not with the prime purpose of studying, but I'm going to a specific university wherein Professor Brooks teaches, and hence the use of the article the before university. Coming to the second last one, we have next year, Sally's going to college. So Sally is going to college next year in the capacity of the student, and hence no use of the article. You have next year, Sally is going to college. As opposed to this, you've got we went to the college to see Sally. Over here, we are going to the college in the capacity of visitors and not as students, and hence the introduction of the article the before college. Coming to the final example, which is her father goes to church every Sunday. So this, this becomes it's obvious that he goes for the prayer service and hence you have no article as opposed to this you have some workmen went to the church for repairs so these workmen did not go for the prime purpose of a church which is to pray rather they went for some repairs to a specific church hence you've got some workmen went to the church for repairs and that is rule number six purpose versus place you're going to omit the article if you have the purpose in mind but you're going to introduce the article the if you have the place in mind primarily that's rule number six let's proceed to rule number seven All right, so we come to rule number seven, which is the case of the superlatives. Now, the superlatives are the strongest degree of the adjectives. You have some examples such as biggest, strongest, tallest, most beautiful, most intelligent, and so on. And the rule over here quite simply is that whenever you wish to mention a superlative in a sentence, you always do that along with the article the. Let's have a look at some examples. You've got the first sentence as the advertisement reads that it's going to be the biggest sale ever. Let's go to the second one. You have another example as they say, it's the strongest bridge ever built. Coming to the third example, you have Sharon is the most beautiful girl in her class. And you have finally, uh, an aptitude quiz was held to find out the most intelligent student. So that is rule number seven, the rule of the superlative, which is that you always, always use the article the along with the mention of a superlative. Let's proceed to rule number eight. We arrive at rule number eight, which is the rule of general versus specific. And the rule simply goes that whenever we wish to talk about a person or a thing in general, we do that by using the articles a uh, or an. Whereas if we wish to talk about a specific person or thing, then the article of choice is the. Let's have a look at some examples. We've got the first sentence as, let's consult a doctor. Now over here, the speaker does not mean any particular doctor. They do not have any specific doctor in their mind. Hence the sentence as, let's consult a doctor. As opposed to this, you've got the sentence, let's consult the doctor. Now this time, the speaker does have a particular doctor in their mind, perhaps the doctor that they usually go to. Hence the sentence as, let's consult the doctor. Coming to the next example, you have the sentence as I need a phone. Now over here, the speaker is not specific about which phone. All they need is a phone which can get the job done with which they can make their call. Hence the sentence as I need a phone. As opposed to this, you have the sentence I need the phone. Now this time the speaker is specific about the phone that they need. Hence the use of the article the. You've got I need the phone because the speaker insists on having a particular phone. Coming to the last example, which is 
could you lend me an umbrella? Now over here, the speaker is not concerned about which umbrella, all they need is any umbrella which would keep them safe from the rain. Hence you've got the usage of an giving you the sentence as could you lend me an umbrella. And uh, the response to that is, I'd love to, but the umbrella's broken. Now this time, the speaker is specific about the umbrella. It's the umbrella that they own and it's broken. So you have the article, the, specifying that umbrella over there, giving you the sentence as, I'd love to, but the umbrella's broken. So that's rule number eight, which is general versus specific. We use the articles a or an to talk about a person or a thing in general, whereas we use the article the to specify a particular person or a thing. Let's proceed to rule number nine. We arrive at the second last rule, which is describing people and things. And the rule simply goes that whenever we wish to describe anything about people, things or animals, we do that with the help of the articles a uh, or an. Let's have a look at some examples. We've got the sentence as Jamie's got a cute smile. Similarly, you have Nicole has a sharp nose. But be sure not to use the articles a uh, or an along with plurals or uncountable nouns. Let's have a look at those examples. Uh, you've got the sentence as Beth's got great hair. So hair over there is an uncountable noun and hence the absence of the article giving you the sentence as Beth's got great hair. Similarly, you have another sentence as Matilda's got blue eyes. This time eyes is your plural noun, hence the absence of the article once again, giving you the sentence as Matilda's got blue eyes. And now on to some things in animals. You've got uh, uh, two more descriptions such as a lizard is a reptile and you've got a hammer is a tool. And that's the second last rule which is describing people and things. Whenever we wish to describe anything about people, things or animals, we do that with the help of the articles a uh, or an. And now proceeding to the final rule, rule number 10. We finally arrive at rule number 10, which is about musical instruments and names of technological devices. And the rule over here is quite simple, which is that whenever we wish to talk about musical instruments or the names of technological devices, we accompany them with the article the. Let's have a look at some examples. We've got the first sentence as, I'd love to learn to play the violin. Let's take a look at another one. We've got the sentence as the guitar is perhaps the most popular musical instrument. But of course, if you're talking about purchasing or buying an instrument, you can easily go ahead and use the article a uh, because right now you're not certain or you haven't zeroed down on any particular make or type of the instrument. And you can have sentences such as I'd like to buy a guitar. And now on to the technological devices. You've got the first one as the mobile phone has revolutionized human life. So over here, the mobile phone speaks for the entire class of the device. That is all the mobile phones all over the world. So you've got the sentence as the mobile phone has revolutionized human life. And the last example as the microwave is a handy domestic appliance. And that's the last rule, which was about musical instruments and names of the technological devices. I hope you found this presentation useful. This was about the basic rules of articles. We'll surely be moving ahead to the advanced ones too. Please stay tuned to the channel. If you have liked the video, please go ahead, like, share, and subscribe. I'll be back soon with more useful stuff. Till then, keep watching, keep supporting. Thank you so much.